Okay, one second. Let me just. I think what I'll do. Is move my screen here. Oh, you can hear me now. Oh, that's good news. Can everyone hear me? Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. I'm not sure what happened there. I apologize for that. Okay. Let's go back into the account. Okay. So with the toolbar, if we go ahead and right click anywhere in there, we can click on this customize. Um, so if for say, uh, for instance, maybe you don't necessarily need the lab tracking icon on your toolbar, you can go ahead, left click on your mouse, hold the mouse and then drag it down into this commands list here. That will remove it off of the, the toolbar. Um, and just completely opposite, if there's an, uh, an icon you'd like to see on your toolbar, say, oh shoot, we do want to see lab cases. You can simply grab it from this commands list, drag it up to the toolbar, and wherever you see that black bar, or that black line, once you release your, um, your mouse, that's where it will place it. In addition to that, if you want to rearrange the icons on the toolbar, as long as your customization window is open, you can simply drag. So if I click on this patient history here and say I want to move it closer to the front, I can drag it and drop it wherever I see that black line and that's where it will appear. So you can rearrange it. Another tip, um, if you click on this options here, you can show toolbar text. So for the new users, you may want to show your toolbar text. Um, you know, it kind of <laughs> makes it a little easier to tell what those icons mean. Now, of course, in doing that, it takes up a little more room on the toolbar. Um, so at this point, you would want to click this drop down arrow, and this is where all the other icons would kind of lie here. Okay, for now, I'm going to go ahead and, excuse me, right click customize. I'm going to go to options, and I'm going to just hide my toolbar text here. So now I'm just seeing the icons. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about this area up in here. So next to the patient name, you'll see an icon. Um, it's called change patient. So if you do need to change your patient, you can click on the icon. And now you're going to see a different icon. So they share the same space. This is your use last patient icon. So if you need to, you know, revert back to the patient you were just on, you can certainly do that. If you need to change your patient, at this point, you can start typing in, um, you know, a last name, uh, first initial, tab, I don't have a Jones. Um, you could just type in the last name and it will bring a list of all the patients with that particular last name. So the key is once you've typed it in here is to hit tab. Now you also have an area that you can type in a patient ID if you're searching by patient ID or you can click on that blue hyperlink um, that says patient and it will take you to the patient list here. Uh, for now, I'm going to go back to Chad Black here. Excellent. So we'll talk next about this patient information drop down. So, you know, there are things you can see when you're looking up here under each patient in the account. Um, you know, you can see their individual balance, um, what's due now, if they have a next preventive appointment, next regular appointment with doctor. This is when they're due for their next recall. It doesn't necessarily mean that's when they're scheduled. If they do have a scheduled appointment, it will appear here for recall. Uh, when their last bite wings were walked out, Pano and FMX. But if you click on this drop down arrow, you'll get a little more information. So depending on which patient you have selected here in blue, 
That's the information you'll get. So we can see email, home phone, cell phone, work phone, birth date. Again, we'll see patient balance. If there's any estimated insurance out on this patient, um, we'll also be able to see that same information as far as appointments, but you'll also be able to see the tally of any failed or canceled appointments as well. Um, the imaging here, and if you do have a patient photo, um, tied to this account, it would show. Now you have the second tab, insurance information. So you'll get a nice little summary. You have your primary insurance here. Um, it shows who the policy holder is. And then if there's any secondary, you'll see that as well. So if I click on Anna, same thing, I'll get the, uh, the policy holder would be Chad at this point. We'll get that insurance info information there as well. So this is a handy little um, quick drop down menu that you can just view some information. Of course, we know if you need to get more detailed, you can absolutely go into this edit patient screen and get to, you know, all the information you may need. We'll talk next about the dockable panels that are available in the account screen. So over on the right hand side, we have these um, what are called action buttons. So anything with the little arrow here um, can be a dockable or floating panel. And we'll talk about that. Um, if I just X out of the balance here, then I can click on it again and see that this window pops up. Now, a lot of people like to take this little window and just kind of float it right next to this patient bar here in this area. It's not actually docked, it's just what we call floating. If we wanted to dock a panel, let's just look at activity. So activity is kind of a, a nice little window of information. It shows you when the last account payment was when the last insurance payment was and the last statement when that was sent. So if this is something you kind of want to have up and see um, all the time just by glancing at that account uh, window, you can grab the title bar, hold it down with your left uh, click on your mouse, and at this point you'll see these little helper directional icons. So depending on which area of the window you want to actually dock this window, um, you'll see a blue kind of um, bar or, or shade there. So if you wanted to dock it on the right hand side in the blue, simply release your mouse. And now we have our activity um, action button um, expanded over here. So it is now docked. Um, it's there to stay. Some offices or um, team members kind of want to have this up, but maybe they don't want to have it taking up a, a, a bigger portion of the screen. I'll get to your question in a sec, Martha. Um, you can push this pin here, and what it's going to do is it's going to create a tab over at the side. So you see this activity tab, when you hover over it, um, it will go ahead and expand that window again, and then it'll go ahead and hide it again when you hover away. So you have different options there um, of how you want to see these. Um, if you don't want it over there, you can grab that title bar again, right, and then just put it wherever you want to put it. I'm going to exit out and just kind of put it back in this um, little uh, action button area. You do have account alerts as well. Um, let me pull this over here. So if you do need to add an account alert, um, this is where you would do it from. So for instance, if this is a cash only patient, you would simply highlight that alert and click add. Um, at this point, when you open the account, you'll get a pop-up that says cash only. Um, if you don't need that alert any longer, you can select it and hit remove. We also have this preferences uh, action button here. So if this account indeed um, will receive statements, you wanna make sure this is checked. If this is an account, you're not sending statements out, you, know, you have the ability to uncheck that. Um, same for finance charges, billing charges. 
if you are charging those. Um, the account type, if you are creating different account types, um, such as maybe a Medicaid account or a family and friends, or maybe this account has gone into collection, you can go ahead and attach that account type here. Uh, and you can run, you know, reports of your account types as well, if that's something you wanted to do. This message for statements. So this will take precedence over the message that is specified in your statement wizard. So maybe this is a special patient and, you know, you, you want to write a, a different, um, more customized, individualized message for them. You can certainly do that. The monthly message down here on the bottom, and you can do this from the statement queue as well, um, but this is a one-time message that will appear. So let's just say, you know, it's November, Thanksgiving's coming up. You can write something and, you know, happy Thanksgiving. And this will appear only on, you know, this month's statement. Okay, all right. So those are your action buttons um, and how you would go about docking them or floating them. So the floating panel, panels, you know, aren't docked. Um, they'll remain if you close the window and go back in. Then it will pop back up here as well. Okay. So this, yeah, uh, Martha, the social security number doesn't show actually in the account, um, but you could click on that edit patient icon right there. And at this point, you can click in that box and see that so social number there, um, just kind of for security purposes. I don't think it is accessible in this patient details either. So we really try to keep that um, limited as to, you know, where that number shows up just, just for security purposes, but you can get it right from that edit patient window. Um, we'll talk about the tabs on the bottom here. Um, so you can move between these tabs, you know, without losing any information you may have entered in there. Um, so if I'm going to go ahead and push this down, if for some reason um, you need to make an account payment and you enter in your check number and let's just say we're putting in an amount, but for some reason you, you want to go back in and take a look at the account just to make sure. If you click and look at the account, you can go back into the walkout or the account payment, excuse me, and that information is still there. So it's kind of nice, um, you know, you can toggle back and forth without ever having to leave the account screen and without losing any information. So if you start a walkout, you know, and you need to go in and check the account, you can easily do that without having to, um, you know, re-enter any of that information. You can also sort your columns here in the account window. So if we take a look up in the title area of the column, once we start hovering there, we can see this little filter icon. So if you click on that, you have the ability to sort by, you know, which maybe you wanna see um, only the transactions or services for Dr. Young. So if we click on Dr. Young, we'll see it narrows it down to anything pertaining to Dr. Young. Um, let's see here, Dr. Morgan, looks like he's the main provider here. Um, so you can filter, which is really kind of nice. We can clear the filter. I think, Martha, if you don't have a check number, you don't have to enter it in there. Um, I think it just makes it easier kind of to track down payments if you ever have to do any, um, you know, researching for that, especially if it's an insurance check. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you can also filter, you know, by patient. So if we click on this and well, let's see here. 
it should show Anna here. Well, oh, Anna doesn't have any transactions yet, guys. I just put her in as a new patient. So once she does have transactions, she would show up here um, and we would be able to filter for just Chad or just Anna. And there's another way to do that um, in, in the account as well. But I know sometimes we, if we have multiple people on an account, it's a lot easier to kind of see what's going on when we can filter that down. Um, you can also um, sort columns. So if you want to go ahead and right click, you can sort from, if you do ascending, you can sort from A to Z, descending, you know, Z to A. You can group the column. So if you go ahead and group a column, it'll kind of just put everything over on the right hand side there. Um, you can also, let's see here. You can also customize your columns. Um, so if there is something, um, you know, say you want to see what your transactions impacting, whether it's production, collection, um, adjustment, you can put this impacts. If you drag it with your left mouse, you can put impacts up here. So you're going to see every transaction in here, you know, what that's impacting. So we had a check number or a check for, you know, 45, and that's impacting our collections, of course. Um, you know, our services, what are that, what are they impacting? Our production. So you do have the ability um, to, you know, customize this account window um, and see what exactly it is you want to see. You can also hide a column just like that. You're also able to, if you right click and maybe there's um, a column you don't want to see, you can just kind of drag it off of that account window and it's gone. Now if we want to right click, we can go ahead down to customize and we can put that right back up. So you see where those two arrows show? If you release your mouse, that's where that um, will kind of fall back into. So lots of options there on sorting and customizing your columns. Now filtering the ledger, again, there's another way you can do that. Um, if you come down here to filter ledger, you have the ability again here to filter by provider, similar to what we did up there. Um, patient items only. So again, if you want to just see everything for Chad or everything for Anna, um, you can do that. If you select that patient on the top, let's go to an account that has multiple people just so you can kind of see um, how that will work. So with Charles Abbott, I have uh, Jack Abbott, Janice Abbott on the account as well. So we see it's all mixed in here. If I want to see just what was done on Janice or just Janice's transactions, I could come here to filter ledger. And if I select patient items only and apply filter, at this point, it's just going to show everything for Janice. Okay. Um, you can also run a report for that. So once you filter it, you can run a report and it would show um, exactly what you filtered out. So when we do come to filter, I mean, you can also show, you know, all account items. So it'll show for everybody. If you just want to see services, right, we can clear all over here on the right and just select services, apply filter. And at this point, it's just going to show all the services that have been um, completed. I know sometimes, you know, we get a lot of um, notes in there or deletions and that just kind of mucks up the, the ledger. So it is nice to be able to come in here and um, be able to filter, you know, those things out just so things are a little more clear. You can show unpaid transactions only. So if we click on that and apply filter, it's just going to show everything that hasn't been paid completely on yet. You can also do that from the 
uh, the left hand side of your ledger as well. If you right click in this area, you can show unpaid transactions only here as well. So kind of nice. I, uh, I get a lot of offices that don't realize you can filter that. Um, and it's kind of a big aha moment for them. They love it. Um, you know, when you do have multiple people on an account, it can get a little hairy. So I'm a big fan of kind of giving everyone their own account. Um, just so, you know, it limits the, the confusion. But there are definitely um, instances, you know, where everyone would be on a same account or offices prefer that. But that's how you would go ahead and filter that out. So we'll talk next about um, line item accounting in EagleSoft. Um, I know there's some softwares out there still that don't do line item accounting. And to me, I just can't imagine um, not having it. So it really allows you to apply a payment directly to a specific line item, you know, or a specific provider or a specific patient. So it's an excellent way to group services and payments that are related together as well. So it just really makes the account ledger easier to manage. Um, you can see at a glance kind of where the balance is coming from and which services have been paid in full. So line item um, accounting to me is, is a must and it's a great benefit. So let's just, for example, I'm gonna go back in um, to Chad. And we see he, do, he does have a balance of $537. And we can also see up here um, that that balance is indeed for Chad. So if you come in here to, to select an account payment, what's going to happen is there's going to be all of your unpaid transactions listed here. Now you can view that by line item. You can view by patient and just apply it to the patient. You can view it by provider and just apply to the provider. Um, it's defaulted to go to the oldest non-insurance balance first. So if you don't come in and select line item and put it to you know which service you need to, it will automatically default to this oldest non-insurance balance. Um, when you'd use the line item, you can essentially put that money exactly where it needs to go. So for example, um, let's just say we have a check for um, $100. We can see it's, it's applying it to, um, you know, the crown here on number 32. But for instance, let's just say this patient is making a payment on number 29. He's trying to pay down his balance. You can go ahead, zero that out, and then go ahead and type in your $100 on that specific line item where it needs to go. Now, some offices say, well, what's the difference? Why does it matter? You know, he, he has a balance on both of these. Um, we're just paying it down. Well, I think it would matter if for some reason it was a different provider who provided those services or um, if it's a different patient in the account. You know, sometimes we do get those patients, um, maybe if it's a husband and wife and they're dead set on paying only their balance, right? They're not paying uh, their husbands. He can take care of that. Um, so, you know, sometimes we do have that uh, instance where we really want to make sure it goes to the line item it, it needs to go to. And it just makes your accounting clean, um, just a lot easier to, to manage. So that's a, a really a great benefit. I always, so you may or may not see when you go into an account payment, if you don't see kind of that drop down of all the unpaid transactions, make sure you click your distribute button. Um, and then from that point on, you won't have to click it again. It'll remain open unless somebody goes in and unchecks it. 
but I always have this distribute button checked and I always have the line item uh, radio button selected. Everybody clear on that? Uh, Eaglesoft does automatically age the accounts, so there is no manual account aging needed. Now let's talk about our unassigned, <clears throat> excuse me, unassigned credits. So when we look on the left-hand side of our account, we may see a few different icons. So we have our unpaid uh, transaction icon. And then we also have an icon uh, with a dollar sign and a question mark. And this is what's called an unassigned credit. So unassigned credits um, are payments or adjustments that aren't assigned to any specific line item service. Um, sometimes, you know, they're a result of overpayments or prepayments on an account. So, you know, we may have an unassigned credit if somebody does indeed come in and maybe prepay for a service they're going to have, or if they put a deposit down, you know, we'll get an unassigned credit in that case. But sometimes it's just, if someone's posting payments incorrectly, you know, we may get an unassigned credit from there as well. So if you double click on this icon, what it's going to do, it's going to tell you at the top that it came from this particular check number and this is the unassigned amount. It's also going to list your unpaid transactions at the bottom. So if you need to um, indeed apply that, that unassigned credit to a service that it was supposed to go to, you know, you can do that here. So, you know, when we look at our unpaid transactions, it looks like 909 is due for this um, number 29. And the payment here was 909. So I'm going to take my best guess and say that that money should have went to that uh, crown number 29. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out that top line. And I'll go back in here to number 29 and enter in my $909. So now we can see that this is unassigned. I hit save and our icon is gone. So when you, um, you have to have security uh, in your, in your uh, security profiles. Um, this is typically um, defaulted to, to be off. So if you go into your security profiles <clears throat> under your, um, financial security zone, you can change that edit credit distribution. So Martha, I zeroed out because I didn't want that money to go towards, there were two services on there and I didn't want that money to go towards this particular crown here. It, it was supposed to go towards that other crown had the $909 balance. Um, so I wanted to zero out the this crown here and apply it completely, the 909 to that other crown so that it, it went ahead and it took care of the balance on that crown. So, you know, essentially you decide, you know, where that money goes. If that patient brings in that check and says, I'm paying off, you know, my lower right crown, number 29, you would essentially go ahead and put that money where it needs to go. You can, you can highlight. So <clears throat> I would always select this line item here. So what happens, um, let me go into a different account here. So I can kind of go over this again. Um, I'm gonna go into Charles Abbott again. Now keep in mind guys, this is a demo database so <clears throat> There's kind of uh, a lot of stuff in here that probably isn't like real life, but um, I use this just for kind of training and demonstration. So let me go ahead and hit no. If I go into account payment, and it's the same if you have unassigned credits. So if I go in and I wanna put in a check for 
um, let's just say, let's look at three hundred and five dollars. Well, no, let's do let's do one hundred and sixty two twenty five just so we can pay off this one here. One hundred and sixty two twenty five. It automatically goes <clears throat> kind of to where it needs to go, which is great. It won't always do that. Um, because if somebody comes in and says, you know, I want to pay towards, I want to pay towards my crown on number 19. I really want to get that one paid off. You know, you could essentially zero out where it's going to so that you can apply the total amount to that particular line item that they are paying off. So you're putting that money where it needs to go. I'm zeroing out the money on this particular line item because that's not where that money needs to go. So we're still gonna have an unpaid balance there. We're putting it right to the, the service where indeed it does need to go. Does that make sense? <clears throat> that's the beauty of it. You have the flexibility um, to put it where exactly it needs to go. And that is, like I said, that's the same with an unassigned credit. So we have unassigned credits here in Charles Abbott's account. So if I double click on that, it's gonna show me I have $500 in there that hasn't been applied to anything. So these are all of my unpaid transactions. Where does that $500 need to go? Well, if it is indeed truly maybe a prepayment or an overpayment, maybe it is going to still be unassigned because if it's a prepayment, you'll wait till the day that that patient has that service completed and then you'll apply that unassigned amount on that particular walkout. But if it's not truly a prepayment, or an overpayment. <clears throat> this money needs to go somewhere and it, it it needs to be assigned to some kind of right open invoice, open line item. So at this point, you know, where does that $500 need to go? You pick, right? So you can put it, if you're gonna put the entire balance on one line item, well, you have to zero out where it's trying to put all, you know, the rest of the money. So if I'm going to put the entire $500 just on one item, you know, you would have to zero out where it's trying to automatically put it because it wants to pay the oldest non-insurance balance first. You can divvy it up, you know, if you wanted to put 200 here, you know, 100 here, you know, you can certainly do that as well. And it tells you how much is left, you know, how much is still unassigned. So you have $200 still that you need to go in and assign. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put it all towards this uh, crown here. And again, this would be beneficial if, you know, you have multiple people on an account and, you know, maybe the husband is trying to pay off his, his crown. We don't want his money going towards, you know, maybe a cleaning for his wife. He wants to pay off his crown. So that's where that would really, really come in handy. And of course, if you're paying providers on collections, right, you really need to make sure that money is going to that provider's particular service. Now, we'll go back into the account and I'll show you if for some reason, you have placed a payment incorrectly um, on, on the wrong service. So you can come in here at any, any payment. If you right click, you can click this view distribution. Now you have to have that security access in your profile to edit credit distribution, but you can view distribution and it's gonna show you where this $500 payment is to which crown, which provider, which patient in the account. So if that was incorrect, if that payment wasn't supposed to go towards that crown or that provider, you could right click and you can remove debit item from distribution. So what happens, it takes that payment off that line item 
and it leaves it now as an unassigned credit. At this point, you click on your unassigned credit and you go put that money where it needs to go. So if it needed to go to, you know, the wife or, you know, not Dr. Young, Dr. You know, Jones, you can put it exactly where it needs to go. So it again, it wants to automatically divvy it out by the oldest non-insurance balances first, but you can go ahead. I'm going to say it needs to go here. At this point, I need to zero out all the other. Well, let's zero that one out. That we don't have $500 due on that one. So we'll go where we have $500 due at least, and we can put it there. And now we have no unassigned, and that's all taken care of. If you have a check, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this check. I'm going to right click here again and view distribution. So we have this check of $500 for multiple services. If this check wasn't supposed to go to any of those services at all, I can right click and clear the entire distribution. So remove debit item would clear one service. Clear entire distribution would go ahead and take the money off all of these services and put it as an unassigned credit. And then these again would all be unpaid transactions. You can run a report. There is an unassigned credit report as well in your reports. Um, you can also process it during your end of day as well. So it runs at your end of day if that's something you wanted to check. Now, the reason I don't, um, let's go back into Charles Abbott here. Well, I cleared that out. So let's see if Chad had. One second. The reason I don't um, automatically distribute, if I get that window for an unassigned credit here, let me make this an unassigned credit so I can show you. I'm going to right click, remove debit item. Okay, now I'm going to close. I'll go back into the account. And you'll see I get this apply unassigned credit. So it says there are unassigned credits on this account that are able to be assigned to one or more unpaid debit transactions. So if you choose to apply it, it's gonna go ahead and put it, you know, towards a service that may or may not um, be the correct provider. So again, if you're an office that has multiple providers and you are tracking collections, you know, you may not just want to hit yes. You may want to hit no and go in and investigate, you know, why is there an unassigned credit? Where does it need to go? Is it a prepayment? Great. Let's leave it there. Um, again, if you have multiple people on an account, you might not just want to hit yes, because if you have that family that is real particular about where their money goes and they want to see it, you know, on their statements correctly, then you may not want to just hit yes. Now, if you're a one provider office and this patient is the only patient on the account, then sure, why not, you know, but just something to think about. Is that making sense to everybody? I'm going to go back here to good old Charles Abbott. And we'll talk about um, a couple different ways you can view payments in the account. So you can show the payments as one entry. So if we look, we did a payment today, a couple payments, but we did um, a payment here for check number, you know, three, four, five, four, five, four. And it's just showing one bulk, bulk amount. If you show distributed amounts of payments, We'll see, hey, yeah, that check did just go to Charles in that complete amount. But this check number, 77777, <laughs> went to two different services for two different account members. 
So it'll actually break it down. You know, we put 429 of that check towards Janice and $70 of that check, you know, went to Charles. So if I show it as one entry, it's going to go ahead and give you the entire amount just for that one entire account. If you show distributed amounts, it will break it down to who the payment went to and in what amount from that check. So, you know, it's up to you how you want to view that. You do have the ability um, to, to change it if you'd like. All right. So we talked about, um, you know, how you need to, to get access to be able to change the credit distribution in your security profiles. So if I come up here, I just want to show you real quick under list persons or provider and staff. If we go to, let's say Janet Baker and I hit edit. And I go to security. If I go to financial. It's right here, edit credit distribution. So you would have to double click on that. Um, and at that point, that staff member or provider would be able to. Um, to change the, the credit distribution. Okay. Let's go back um, to the account, of course. And we will talk about um, a couple other buttons over here. We have the smart claim. We also have smart invoice. So the smart claim, if for some reason you need to resubmit a claim or you need to, you know, add a service to a claim that maybe didn't go out that day, um, you needed to add a bite wing or, or what have you. Um, you can recreate a claim. You would simply wanna just highlight the services. So let's say we're going to recreate um, a claim for this crown. We can highlight the service, come over here to smart claim. At this point, the recreate claim window pops up and it's just verifying that this is the service we're recreating. We can hit OK. Are you sure you wish to recreate it? Yes. And then we're going to go ahead and get our insurance um, claim questions window. So then we can simply go ahead and hit OK. And now we see our claim is blue again, so it recreates it. Uh, we also have smart invoice, so if you need to recreate uh, maybe a walkout receipt or um, maybe if a patient comes in and they want to see all of their services and payments for the year because they want to um, submit that to, you know, their health savings account, what have you, um, or maybe someone comes in and they just want to, um, they lost their walkout statement from their last visit. So they want to have um, a copy of that. So you can highlight uh, the services from their last visit. Let's just say this is their last visit. We can highlight the payment. So if we select it and hit shift, then you can select um, multiple services there. And at this point, you can come up here and hit smart invoice. And then this is what they'll they'll get here. So they'll go ahead and get this. It looks just kind of like um, they're you know when they print their walkout statement. Um, so they'll be able to see. So it's pretty kind of nice. You have the flexibility to kind of cherry pick to, um, you know, if they just want to see all their payments. You can hit control, and control will allow you to cherry pick. Um, if you hit shift, you know it's gonna anything you select at the top and then the bottom, it'll include all of that, but control will allow you to cherry pick too. So if they just wanna see kind of all their um, personal payments, we can do that too. So yeah, I'll go through posting payments here in a second. 
And that's exactly what we're getting to next, Martha. So you're reading my mind. <laughs> so if we want to post an account payment, an account payment would be somebody comes in to make a payment on their account. Uh, somebody mails in a check, or if you're doing an online, you know, payment service credit card, um, you know, you would come in here to account payment. And at this point, you're going to get your list of all unpaid transactions. Um, so we have a lot here for this particular account. So, you know, you're going to decide, you know, is this someone paying off one of their services? Um, does it matter where this payment goes? Who's the provider? Right? Are there multiple providers? So, you know, this is where we're going to really kind of decide where is that payment going to go? So you can either, you know, click your um, check, your, um, if it's cash, right? So select your payment type. We put in the amount, let's just say it's uh, $100. They, they mail in a check because they're, they're trying to pay off, um, you know, their services. So let's just say this is a, a payment from Charles. Charles needs to pay off his crown. Um, it automatically is trying to go to Janice here. It's putting that $100 towards Janice because that is the oldest non-insurance balance. We don't want it to go towards Janice. We know Charles is wanting to pay off his crown. So I'm simply going to click in here, hit zero. It's taking that payment off of that service. I'm now going to come down to Charles, let's say he's trying to pay off number 19. And I'm going to go ahead and put that amount on that particular line item. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back to the account. It's showing my account payment as cash for Charles. I'm going to right click and see where that payment went. So say a week later, I want to see, you know, where exactly that went. I'm going to view distribution. It shows me right down here. It went to Charles for crown number 19 and it was $100. Does that make sense? If it's a mistake, if it wasn't supposed to go to Charles, you can right click and remove debit item from distribution. So now we have an unassigned credit. I'm going to close this out. When I look at the account now, here is my unassigned credit icon. I can double click on it. It's going to give me another opportunity to put that money where it needs to go. Again, it's trying to put it to Janice because she has the oldest non-insurance balance. Okay. If we don't want it to go towards Janice, we zero that out on that line item. We'll put it back to number 19. I want to help Charles out here. Okay, then we hit save. So that's how you're going to do an account payment. Now, let's talk about an insurance payment. So if you get an insurance payment, and you're going to go ahead and click on this insurance payment tab. And what it's going to do, it's going to bring up all the claims for whichever patient in that account you are highlighted on. So if I click on Jack, it'll change and it'll show me all of Jack's claims that are out. Same for Janice, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on Charles and it's showing me he has uh, three claims out. So let's just say I'm getting a, a payment on this claim here. If I need to view the claim, just to verify this is the correct claim, I can view selected claim. Now, if there's any kind of notes I need to make for this claim, um, maybe insurance, you know, denied payment, or maybe um, they estimated at 719, but Maybe they only paid 500 because they ran out of benefits or what have you. You can click notes here. 
And then what happens is you're going to get this window. It's going to show all of the previous notes from the insurance claims. If you hit add note, it'll take you into the note uh, ledger, note history, and you can type a note regarding that claim. And then it will always be attached kind of to that um, claim note within your account ledger. So it'll tie that note uh, to that particular claim. So at this point, we either pick insurance check or if it's an EFT payment, I know a lot of uh, insurance companies are doing EFTs or what have you, um, you put in your check number. And then let's just say they are going to pay the full, you know, 719.25. Okay, we can go ahead and hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and get, let me hold on one second. It's saying that, yeah, see, this is what happens with a dummy database. I don't always get the correct information in here, but at this point you can credit the account. If there is um, money left over that wasn't paid by insurance and you are in contract with them, you can credit that amount off. Um, if you're not in contract, you know, you're just going to go ahead and simply apply that. Let me close the secondary claim. You'll apply that back, um, you know, to the account. Let's do another one. Let's go into. Try to keep these clean here. Let's see here. Okay, let's go into Betsy's account here. Let's see, does she have secondary? Let's look. She does, yep. So we know if they do have secondary, it will want to go ahead and send off, you know, to secondary for you. So let's just say we're going to pay um, let's see here. I'll get my calculator out guys. See if they're going to pay the whole thing here. Okay. All right, so we'll put in our payment. Oh, let me go to a different claim here because this one already has some. All right. We'll do this one. This is better. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Let's say they pay 182. Check number. Okay, so you'll see it will automatically distribute it to that particular line item most of the time. There may be some times when you have to go in, look at your EOB and match, you know, exactly what it is they're paying for each line item. Um, most of the time, though, it will try to um, put it where it needs to go. Um, if we do have a secondary, it'll ask if you want to submit to secondary. And we'll hit yes. And then it'll go ahead and get that claim out for you. Okay. Now, when we go back into the account, I think my screen's. Well, we get our, our secondary window popping up here. Oh, nothing I'm doing here is working out the way I want to show you guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me go back into, let's see here. Let's go. Let's find um, 
Let's go in here to Jack. Let me look at something here. Okay. Okay, let's do this one here. So we'll go in and let's see um, for a periodic evaluation. Okay, so this one was already paid to. Dummy database. It's a demo database. I call it a dummy database. <laughs> Okie doke. Let's do this one. I am so sorry. All right. So we'll put in the amount for $40. It puts it on the line item. We can hit save. And at this point, it shows there is nothing unpaid by insurance. If there was, we could credit the account. Um, and then you could put in the amount you want to credit. I know sometimes if you are in a, a network, if you're contracted, there's, you know, a certain amount you can credit. So if you do um, need to credit it, you can determine how much you want to credit, or you can just not adjust the account and make the patient responsible for um, that remaining balance. Okay. Now, we do also have the ability to do um, bulk insurance payments. So I know sometimes we get that bulk insurance check um, and instead of individually going into accounts, you can um, do a bulk insurance payment. So if you go to activities and bulk insurance payment, you are able to show open claims for insurance company or payment group. So the insurance company sometimes can get a little messy because I know a lot of offices have multiple insurance companies. Um, so that could pose a challenge. Now, what I always recommend is showing open claims for payment group. So what is a payment group you ask as you can see we have different payment groups for different insurance companies so you can essentially group several of your insurance companies together in order to process a bulk payment so for instance if Aetna is entered into your system several times like we see here and you only receive one check from Aetna you know, patients may be attached to different Aetnas in here. So if you create a group, it will allow you to put all of these Aetnas together and post one payment. So in order to create a payment group, if you go into that insurance company and you click edit, right here where it says payment group, since this is Aetna, you can go ahead and type in Aetna, all caps. You know, you want it to be consistent. So if we go into our other Aetnas, same thing. We're going to type in Aetna in that payment group. So this will essentially link them all together so that you can post a bulk payment for that one insurance uh, company. I know not everybody has a clean insurance list. Um, you know, I see it all the time. At some point, we get multiple uh, duplicate insurance companies. So creating these payment groups is really going to make it a lot easier for you um, if you're not going in and getting those insurance companies cleaned up. So once you select that payment group, it's going to go ahead and show you all the all the patients who have claims out, you know, for that particular insurance company. So at this point, you know, you can put in your check number and then say they give you a, a check amount for, you know, $1,000. It's showing down here. It's undistributed. You're going to want to go into uh, each patient on that EOB and enter in the payment. Okay. So let's just say we had a payment for Sutton Jennings for uh, 564. Now you can also click this distribute button at the bottom and what it'll do, it'll open up that uh, claim a little bit 
more for that particular patient and you can see the services that are actually on it. So if you need to distribute that money differently than what it's applying, you can do that as well. Okay. Now you can also check it as final if it is indeed the final payment. Um, and then you can go ahead again and just, just go distribute the rest of the um, the money from that particular check. And then this will show up on your, <clears throat> excuse me, your deposit report and your collect collections reconciliation as well. Pardon me, I had to take a quick drink. So it will show, you know, these as, as the individual payments um, for those accounts. Uh, if you need to view the account from here, you can go in and view that particular account. Okay, you can, again, you can view the claim. So if you need to view that claim that you are um, making the payment on, uh, again, same thing. If you needed to add a note as far as, you know, why we're getting the, the payment we are from insurance or not getting that payment. So, you know, if, if it was denied um, because they're out of benefits, you know, maxing out benefits, you can put that note in there. And you can also, um, if you click this checkbox, it says display note on account statement. So if you do want to display that note um, on their statement, they can see exactly why their claim didn't get paid. Um, so maybe they won't, you know, have to call you. So you do have the option um, to do that as well. And then you can also get to coverage book from here. So if you do want to go in and enter in, um, you know, the information on the EOB, um, if there is a coverage book set up, you could do that from here as well. Okay, so that is your bulk insurance, um, which a lot of offices don't know that this actually exists. So. Um, it is nice if you do get these bulk checks, uh, you don't have to go into each individual account. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and we will talk about um, adjustments here. And then after we talk about adjustments, we'll talk about walkout processing. All right, so if we go into an account, and I'll go back into Chad Black here. I can go in here to adjustment. And now we have the option here on the left-hand side of what kind of adjustment you know, we're going to give. So we have the option to, to do credit adjustment, debit adjustment, return check, right off the account, uh, apply billing charge or finance charge. Um, these adjustments can also be distributed by line item too, so that, you know, the adjustments go exactly where they need to go. And you also see this impacts um, field as well. So these adjustments can be set up um, to impact adjustments, production, or collections. Uh, so if you wanted to review the adjustment types list, you can click on this hyperlink. It'll show you all the adjustments you have. And if you click on edit, it'll show you exactly what it impacts. Okay. So if we look at um, let's look at professional courtesy. We have a professional courtesy here set up to impact production. So the amount of the courtesy we give is directly going to impact the production. So if we're giving a discount, of course, it's going to decrease the production. So we'll get into this uh, a little bit more here, but this is where you're going to go ahead and set up 
you know, what that adjustment is going to affect. So you can look at your reports um, and kind of determine, you know, where your, your credits uh, are going to. The only adjustments that should really affect collections would be any kind of refund. So a patient refund um, or like an insurance refund, those are really the only uh, adjustment types that, that affect collections because they are essentially taking money out of the pot. Okay. All right. So we'll take a look here at credit adjustments. So a credit adjustment will always, um, you know, decrease the balance and that means in effect, it's going to decrease the AR. So I'll go ahead and share with you here. One second. Let me share my other screen so you can see this. Okay. All right, so we'll take a look at what credit adjustments, um, how they're going to impact your AR. Really, they're always going to decrease your AR. So if you're gonna do a credit adjustment and it's impacting production, like we just said, we'll have a decrease in production and a decrease in the AR. If we do a credit adjustment, again, choosing to impact collections, so if it is a refund, um, of course, that's going to increase collection and uh, decrease AR. If we're choosing to do a credit adjustment for adjustments, it's going to decrease adjustments and decrease our AR. Now, when we look at debit adjustments, it'll be a little bit different. So the debit adjustments are always going to increase the AR. So it's gonna put a balance kind of on that patient's account. So if we do a debit adjustment, production will increase production, collections. Um, of course, if we put a balance on the account, um, you know, we're gonna have a decrease in collections because we need to collect that money. Adjustments, if we do a debit adjustment on ad adjustments, it's going to go ahead and increase adjustments. So let me go back to my EagleSoft here. All right. And let me just move a couple windows over here out of my way. Okay, so if we need to do a credit adjustment, it's going to automatically default to what it impacts depending on what adjustment type we choose. So if we want to give a professional courtesy, right, we'll see that it automatically switches to impact production because that's how we have it set up. You can change it on the fly if you wanted to. So if we wanted to give a professional courtesy, maybe we want, we want to give, you know, uh, $50 um, towards his crown. We can go ahead, enter in that amount, and then it's going to apply it to this crown. Again, you can determine where exactly you want that to go. So you do have that flexibility to do that, <clears throat> which is really kind of nice. Um, again, depending on which adjustment type you select, so say if we have to give a patient refund, it's going to automatically switch to impact our collections here. Okay. Writing off an account is going to zero out the account completely and it will inactivate uh, the patient. So you could put a note in here as to why, you know, you're writing it off um, and it will automatically uh, inactivate that patient for you and it will again, zero it out. 
you could do a return check. So if you do need to, uh, maybe it's a bounce check, you can click on this check number uh, hyperlink here and it'll show you all the checks. So if we need to select um, a particular check to return, it's gonna go ahead and it'll fill in the amount for you. If you wanna put in a charge for that, um, say you charge $50 for a return check, um, it's gonna go ahead and put that balance back on the account. You'll pick the provider that the service was done by, and then you'll be able to have that um, balance placed back on that account from the return check. And when you look at your account screen, you'll see it, right? You'll see the type was return check and you'll be able to see the details there. Okay, we have debit adjustment as well. So if you need to put, um, you know, a balance back on the account, you know, you would select what type of adjustment type it would be. Um, if it's just uh, miscellaneous, you could leave it as miscellaneous. You can make a note as to what it's for. And you can also put it in a current 30, 60, or 90 as well. So it's nice that you can um, age, you know, if, if you need to put money back on the account that's due, um, you can go ahead and age it there as well, which is really kind of nice. Of course, you can pick the provider that it's um, owed to as well. Okay. And then of course, you know, if you did want to do billing charges or finance charges, you know, you can um, do that as well from here. If you don't automatically have it set up on your statements, you, know, you can do that from here as well. So the adjustments, um, you know, I would put it kind of to where it needs to go. So if you're walking somebody out and we'll go through a walkout process, but if you're walking somebody out and giving them maybe a 10% courtesy, um, it'll just kind of go where it wants to fall automatically and you can change it too if you want. So we'll go through that um, in the walkout too and you can sh we can show how those adjustments would be applied to those particular services. So let's do that. Let's go through, um, a walkout processing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and discard this adjustment. And I'll go to the schedule. So let's talk about walkout processing. Um, there are, of course, a couple different ways you can do a walkout. You have the ability to go from the schedule and click on this green guy to do a walkout which it will automatically bring in the services that were attached to that appointment. So he did have two fillings attached to that appointment. Um, you can also do a walkout from the appointment card. You could do this fast walkout here. And typically that just, um, I think that even just bypasses the insurance question screen too, if you do this fast walkout. I don't typically typically recommend that. Um, they can also do from the back. They can do a walkout from the chart, a fast walkout. Okay, so there is this fast walkout button here as well, which again, I just, I don't typically recommend that because it's just a lot harder to catch errors that way. Um, I like, for the front staff um, to go into the account and then go to the walkout tab from here. And then what happens is it brings up all the services that were planned so that we can select, you know, from that what was done. Because we do know sometimes the services in the appointment aren't exactly the ones that are actually performed. So unless the back is correcting what they're doing in that appointment, 
we may not get an accurate walkout by just coming here to this walkout. Um, you know, some offices, I encourage offices that are using the charting module, I encourage them to post what they did that day to walk out. So we see here the services that are assigned to this appointment. I encourage them to right click and post just to verify to the front what was actually done. So we right clicked and we posted number nine to the walkout. Let's just say they were scheduled for both of these, but they didn't get to both of them. Say they only did number nine and they only posted number nine to the walkout. Well, what happens is when we go into this walkout icon, it's still going to have both of those fillings regardless of the fact that they only posted one. So that's where mistakes can occur. If they're not removing the service that they didn't do from that appointment, if they're not removing it, and then you just go into the walkout, um, you know, those two services could accidentally be walked out. Now, if I go in from the account and go to the walkout button here, what's going to populate, and let me make this a little bit bigger, we'll see the check mark next to the service that they actually posted to walk out. So we can look at this and say, oh, they only posted number nine to walk out. Obviously they didn't get to number seven. So at this point we can come down here and use the services that they selected and we can bring that one into the actual walkout. So now we have a correct walkout. It just, to me, it helps reduce uh, errors. So if I, let me go ahead and share my other screen here real quick. And I'll just kind of show you uh, a little chart here. Oops, not start video, one second. All right, so here's a little chart I have that discusses these walkout methods their advantages and the disadvantages. So you can take a screenshot of this or take a picture of it with your phone if you want. Um, talking about the fast walkout from either the appointment or the chart and the walkout from on schedule. So yes, the advantages are that it's quick, right? There's no need, um, you know, to, to rekey in their name, there's no need to look at that planned services window. Um, there's less steps, therefore it's fast. But again, the disadvantage could be if services were left on the appointment that weren't done, those would be pulled into that walkout, um, you know, in addition to any services that they did post to walkout. Uh, the fast walkout from the actual chart you know, if offices are doing that in the back, which some are, the patient doesn't need to stop at the front. So if offices have the back staff actually taking payment, um, you know, and no other activity is necessary, the account doesn't need to be reviewed, um, no other appointments need to be scheduled, some offices will do this from the back. So the disadvantages again is that the front desk doesn't have the opportunity to review anything. They don't review the fees. They can't review any insurance information. It just gets sent off. So again, my recommendation um, is to do the walkout from the account window. So the front staff um, goes into the account, clicks that walkout tab at the bottom. The plan services window is opened. Anything that they posted to walk out will be checked, nothing else. So the only disadvantage is it's one extra step, right? But I think that extra step is worth not having the headache of having incorrect services billed um, and then having to go back in and deal with that. So um, I think that's a great little uh, picture depiction of the, the advantages and disadvantages of that. 
let's continue here with um, our walkout. So back to kind of our line item accounting topic. When we do a walkout for that day, patient is in the office, they completed an appointment, this is what was done that day. We can see their patient portion. So if we indeed want to take a payment for that or make an adjustment, we're going to look at these little buttons right here. These buttons here are actually going to apply any payment or adjustment to these services that we're walking out today. If we come down here to account payment or adjustment, it's not going to apply it to today's services. It's going to want to apply it to the oldest non-insurance balance first. So by doing any payment or adjustment here, let's say we're going to do an adjustment for this patient. All right, say we're going to do um, a courtesy, professional courtesy. And you could write a description if you want and the amount. So say we're going to take, you know, 10% off. And I hit apply. It's going to automatically apply it to this walkout today. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and take a payment. It shows me here at the bottom that I have $17.10 due. Well, let's take a closer look at this because we have an unassigned credit in this account. And it's always going to want to take that unassigned credit and apply it to your walkout. So let's just say that that unassigned credit, we'll just say it was a, a, a prepayment for a service that's coming up. We don't want to apply that credit to this walkout, to this service. So in order to remove it, we're going to click on this blue exclamation. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up our unassigned credit here. So if there's more than one, you'll have a list. But it shows our unassigned credit. It is checkmarked to be applied. If I don't want to apply it, I could simply uncheck it. Now when we look, we see that this walkout $17.10 is due from the patient. I'm going to go ahead here. They're going to make a payment, so I'll add the payment. I'm just going to say it's cash. It shows me over here that this is what's due on the walkout, and this is our entire account balance. So let's just say I'm going to do the walkout for $17.10. I hit apply. I'll hit save. Process the walkout. And what it's going to show me is all the unpaid services on this account. And it's showing me that. Oh, it took the. So first it's showing the adjustment. Okay. So since I made an adjustment, a credit adjustment, of $1.90, it's showing me that it did apply it to today's service, and that's where we wanted it to go. Of course, if we don't want it to go there, we can zero out that line and put it to a different service, but we do want it to go there. And it's showing you up here that this automatically distributes credits to services on the walkout first, and that's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that adjustment. Now it's going to take me into my payment, my cash payment of $17.10. It's going to apply it to that walkout item first. Okay. So that's the benefit, the true benefit of adding your payment within that walkout window because it's going to apply it to the correct service, the correct patient, the correct provider. Okay, so let's just say, <clears throat> let's look at Anna. So Anna is Chad's wife, and she's in today for her Profi Full Mouth um, Comprehensive Exam. Let's just say for some reason, um, you know, the back didn't post to walk out. Even though I encourage that, 
I, I encourage it tremendously for the back to really let the front know what they've done. So I like for them to right click and post to walk out. Let's just say they didn't though, and you guys are using routing slips because some offices still do that and that's fine. You would go into the account. We'd go into walkout. And at this point, you're going to get your list of everything that has been planned for Anna. And let's just say on the routing ship uh, slip, they went ahead and marked off everything they did today. So I'm going to go ahead and click this here. It'll select them all. And I'll use selected plan services. So now we see for Anna's account um, for her walkout today, insurance is covering everything except for the comp exam for some reason. I know they typically do, but for some reason this insurance um, is not covering it. So she is responsible for the $50. There is an unassigned credit. I don't want to apply it. You may want to apply it, you know, if, if indeed um, it is a credit on that account and, um, you know, maybe they, they had a, a credit from a previous service, or, you know, or something and, or maybe they had a, a a refund. Maybe they paid too much and the insurance paid more than expected. So now the patient has a, you know, a $50 credit. Well, they just say, just use it towards our, you know, our upcoming services. So maybe you do want to apply that credit. That's fine. But if you don't, you can uncheck it and it won't apply that credit. So now we're due $50 from today's walkout. So we're going to take a payment. And let's just say we're going to do a check. Let's just say we're going to take that payment for $50. But she also wants to put $200 towards their outstanding account balance. So let's go ahead and put in the 250. I'll hit apply. I'll go ahead and hit save. I'll process the statement. And now we see this, we see that it will take that $50 from today and apply it to today's service. It's going to take that extra 200 that we paid and apply it to the oldest non-insurance balance. So indeed, again, if that's what we wanna do, we can leave that 200 there or we can split it up. Let's just say we want 100 to go to this crown and we want 100 to go to this crown, either way. So we can go ahead and apply. And it did make that payment um, for the walkout and for those other services as well. Now you can make, um, you know, multiple payments on, you know, at, at one account payment. So if you wanted, if they wanted to pay partial and check, um, you know, you could do a check payment. Um, you could also do a payment, say they wanted to do part of it in cash. So you could do, you know, multiple payment types as well. Okay. I'm going to go into this account and I'm going to apply this unassigned credit. Just so we have that off of there and it is going towards Chad services. Um, we see we have uh, due now on two crowns here. 709 is unassigned. So I'll go ahead and just hit save. So that's, you know, with the walkout processing, that's really um, important when you're looking at, you know, taking payment for those services or doing an adjustment because it will apply it right to that day's service. This account payment really truly is only for um, payments that come in the mail or you know, if someone comes in uh, to make a payment, we would then go to account payment, insurance payment, of course, uh, for our insurance claims. Again, if we wanted to do an adjustment, you know, we could put in you know, what kind of adjustment we're doing 
maybe you're going to, you know, write off, you know, what's left of or partially what's left of one of their um, balances here. You could do that too. Let's just say we're going to write off. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're not, but if we were to write off the 387, um, you see it goes right here. And of course, you can place that on different uh, services as well. If Martha, you didn't want to apply it to a line item, you could just pick patient, right? And then just put the amount for the patient or by whoever the provider it is that is uh, providing the service. So you do have that option. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to talk about here in the walkout. Um, so let's just say, let's just discard this adjustment. Let's look at this account here. And we'll go to walkout. I'll just select it all. You can essentially show estimation. So do we not have, we do have estimations, but it's not showing. If you come down here, if patient wants to know what their estimated portion um, or what insurance is estimated at, you can come here to this show estimation and it will tell you, here are the details um, of the insurance calculation. So it'll walk through you know, we're starting at a fee of 45, a coverage book does not exist. Based on the employer benefits, um, the percentage to be utilized is 100%. Based on the employer benefits, the deductible does not apply. Since deductible does not apply, the insurable portion is $45. The amount to be covered by insurance is $45 and the primary benefits have been changed. So you can see that nice little estimation. You can print it out if the patient wants to print it. Um, so you do have um, that nice little breakdown there as well. You can also select um, this drop down arrow on the actual line of the insurance portion here, and then you'll get that same exact window as well. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Okay. Of course, you can, um, <clears throat> let me clear this walk out here. You can um, add services or treatment items, you know, individually to a walkout. If you did need to add something here um, that wasn't already in the appointment. <clears throat> It just depends, you know, I don't know um, how much back staff is, you know, participating in the whole charting, <laughs> the whole charting aspect of, of EagleSoft because they can essentially add, um, you know, if they add services to their appointment, they can add that all from the chart. Um, so hopefully within your office, your back staff is is really kind of utilizing the software to, to its potential because it really makes the flow um, of the patient's appointment so much nicer. Um, but yeah, you can, if you need to, you can add services to that particular walkout. So if you're gonna do um, a crown, that's not a crown, that's right wings. I have my numbers backwards. Then you could pick the tooth here. You could click on this drop down arrow, pick your tooth. Um, if it was a filling, you would be able to pick the surface as well. 
if for some reason you needed to edit the service, so if you need to edit the fee for some reason on the fly, you can come in there to that edit service. Uh, you can change the provider. You could change the tooth number. Um, you can change the fee. You can also change the insurance estimation too. So if for some reason you know that that estimation is wrong, hopefully it's not. Hopefully you have all your fee schedules and your percentages. Hopefully that's all set up correctly, um, but you can change that. And if for some reason you're not submitting um, to insurance, if it's a redo of a crown, maybe that was done you know, six months ago. Maybe you don't wanna submit that to insurance. You could uncheck that submit to insurance. So that would be, um, you know, your edit, edit service button here. Okay. So we are um, gonna talk next. You can do a family walkout um, pretty easily. If, if you guys don't know that, I'll go ahead and just kind of do a demonstration. Let's schedule, um, you know what we can do? Let me show you how to schedule a family. I'm gonna come up here to this create appointment icon and I'm gonna to go to this drop down arrow and create family appointment. At this point, I can type in my name, select the account and it's asking me who I wanna schedule. So I'll go ahead and pick the three of them. And then it's also asking for an appointment type. So I'm just gonna pick a uh, profi for all of them here. And then what happens is we can hit save and it will put all three of them, <clears throat> excuse me, over here in the queue under family appointments. So all I have to do at this point is just slide them into the slots um, you know, that I want them to be seen. Okay. So now we have the three of them um, assigned their appointment types. They probably don't have services in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the services for them. I'm using my exploding codes here, which truly makes it a lot easier than typing in each individual service. So I have my exploding codes for cleanings. And then we'll put Janice in here too. Okay, great. So now let's say um, they were all completed and they posted everything to walk out. So let's go through Back staff is gonna post to walk out. So front staff knows exactly what was done, which really makes our lives a lot easier. All right, one more. Oops, I didn't mean to click in the appointment. Did need to go to the chart. Okay, so we posted to walk out. Now we can do a family walkout. So if we're selected on one of the patients, I can go into account. I can go into walkout. So it's gonna bring in the walkout, everything that was posted for Jack. Now let's say I wanna go uh, and get Charles's information. Everything they posted is checked. I'll hit use selected services. Now, if I click on Janice, same thing, everything that was selected, I can put into the walkout. So now I have all the family members that were in for that day in one walkout. I can go ahead, I see we have a $300 due now. I'll go ahead and add that payment. $300 in and I'll apply. Once I hit save, 
it's going to show me exactly where that money is being distributed. So it's showing, um, we're applying that to all the services today. And I'll go ahead and hit apply. It's gonna submit the claims. And there's the one for Charles. And then we'll have the one for um, Janice. All right. And I have my PDF set up here. Okay, let's talk about that next, the Casey printables. One second. So when we look at the schedule, we can see all of our family appointments were walked out at the same time. Pretty cool, huh? Now, one other thing too, when we look at our walkout, you do have these options down here. Let's just put all of these in here. For recall appointment. So it'll go ahead and allow you to change the frequency here if you need to. Um, I do encourage the hygienist to kind of keep up with that in the patient preferences. If we do need to switch somebody to a three month, um, they could do that there. But if they don't, you can go ahead and change it here. Um, it'll also show everyone that has a preventive appointment. And then you can go ahead and schedule. If you need to schedule their six month, you can just go ahead and click on that um, day at a glance icon there. So you have this day at a glance, it takes you to the day. You also have week at a glance, month at a glance, right? So you can go ahead and um, schedule right from there. You have your printer option. So if you do wanna print a walkout statement, you can decide if you wanna print more than one, right? So if you do wanna print a statement, you can do that there. <clears throat> Now, the show preview of Casey printables, let's talk about that. So within your service codes, you do have the ability to print out um, a patient information sheet. So um, if we come into that service code list and I'm in the crown here and I hit edit, if I come over here to where it says printables, I can take a look. I have all these different options of what I can attach to that specific code. So if I have a denture and I just delivered a denture, I walked it out, I can automatically print this for the patient, um, which is really kind of nice. So I have a uh, permanent crowns check marked here and I'm attaching that to my crown. Now, when I go to walk a crown out, let's just put in a patient here and walk out a crown. All right, so we have that saved. I'll go ahead into the walkout account and walkout. Go ahead and pick that crown. I have the ability to show a preview of that printable before I actually print it. So once I hit save, it'll have me submit my claim. And then it'll show me the printable that goes along with that procedure. At this point, you can decide if you wanna print that out for your patient. So those are kind of nice. You can attach those to, you know, there's so many different options when you look in there um, for your service codes. Um, of what you can attach it to. So the denture, right? Zero five one one. Sorry, D. 
If we go to the denture service code and hit edit, if I go to printables, I can come here and find that denture. And I can attach it. I think I passed it. There, it's the first one. <laughs> right? So again, when we preview that, this is what would print out for the patient. So these are kind of nice. Those are included, um, you know, with EagleSoft. It, those are no extra charge. There is also Casey, um, which is actually a, a cloud-based program now that you can actually have the patient um, watch videos or animations. It's pretty nice. Um, that is a monthly fee, but you know, it's really great as far as patient education goes. So I do like that a lot. Um, any questions? We've, we've really kind of gone through this pretty quickly today. I do always like to set aside three hours because I never know how many attendees are going to be on and kind of how many questions we have. Um, but we did kind of breeze through this today. So if you have any questions, feel free to chat them for me. Um, I do want to point out here. Let's see. The, uh, let me share my screen over here. I do have the um, support phone number here I want to share with you. Most of you probably have it, but just in case you don't. Um, we do have the support phone number. You can call at any time for questions. This is uh, going to take you to the PTC where there's hundreds of specialists. Uh, there is also a live chat uh, in your FAQ. So this lovely lady on your home screen, um, if you click on her, you can select the FAQ. And I'll go ahead and uh, show you. What that looks like. So we have her here. I'm going to hit F2. Well, that's not going to work, is it? If you click on her picture, you can access this FAQ, which is essentially what I like to call your Google for EagleSoft. So you can type in any keyword here um, and it will go ahead and search, you know, by, um, by keyword. If I put in dockable panels, then it'll go ahead and show me exactly um, how to dock a panel, which panels are dockable. We know on the schedule, the calendar, um, we can dock it, right? Dockable panels in the account screen. So it's a really nice tool to use. You can also do the live chat. So if you click on the live chat, it's kind of a, uh, kind of like the old fashioned AOL messenger where the support specialist will chat back and forth with you. Um, and kind of try to resolve your questions. They can uh, remote in if there is a, a problem that can't be resolved um, by the live chat. And then you can also do an email as well. Um, of course, calling is sometimes a lot more efficient. You just might be on hold for a minute or so, but sometimes it's just easier to get your point across. Um, with a phone call. So knowing more about insurance posting and attachments. So what, if you're, if you're submitting a claim and you need to do an attachment, which I won't be able to show you this um, because I am not actually hooked up to attachments here, but with the attachments, um, you know, you do have this button over here. And Martha, you might want to um, call the PTC and they can set up a training for you for the attachments. You know, if you're, if you're signed up with Patterson for attachments, that training will be free of charge and it's probably about an hour remote training. Um, 
because they'll be able to kind of walk through your software and your system with you and show you exactly how to do that. Like I said, I'm not hooked up to attachments here. It is a, um, you know, a monthly service, but with the attachments, you know, you can take um, snippets of uh, X rays, uh, perio charts, and typically um, when you go to submit a claim, it'll tell you, you know, what attachments you're, you're really going to need for that service. So I would call um, the PTC at that 1-800-475. 5036 and ask to, to get a uh, attachments training scheduled. Um, and they'll be able to kind of walk you through it and really, um, really train you on that. Any other questions about insurance posting? Let's see here. Okay, yeah, that they'll help you a lot. They'll really focus on that in that in that training call. All right. Any other questions from anybody? Let me check my chat here again. Okay. Well, I'm glad you guys were able to join today. I hope you learned something. Um, again, feel free to go to my YouTube channel. It is EagleSoft University. I will have this posted up in a few days. Uh, it does take a while to get the recording back. Um, and I did um, miss the first couple minutes of the recording, so sorry about that. But um, feel free to go on and any questions at all, go ahead and feel free to reach out to support. Um, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving holiday and rest of the year. Take care.